Yeah, a little rebellious. You know, it's funny. I, I don't know if we were... <laughs> I, you know, we, this was never like we were doing work to kind of say, f*** you, pharmaceutical advertising. Um, I think we just, you know, we were, we were looking to make an impact. We were, at that time, a really small agency and um, willing to experiment with all facets of kind of pharmaceutical advertising. Well, when I first saw Tommy, it was proposed as a Moominshans dancer on videotape, and I thought that was pretty dumb. <laughs> and if you don't know what Moominshans is, uh, essentially I think Moominshans was a Swiss-based um, puppet theater group. Essentially, Moominshans was a group of actors who would wear elaborate costumes. If you Google, if you look up Moominshans, you'll see very quickly, um, you know, kind of what the inspiration of the behind the idea was from. We were able to turn that into a, into a pretty cool character. Um, and we saw immediately, the, because of the nature of that symbol, we saw immediately the kind of legs that it had. So the idea was to have something that was campaignable, right? Almost every year, we would find a new thing for Tummy to do. It's checked out of hotels. Driving fire trucks. It's been cradled lovingly by people with face tattoos. It's, it's done, it's seen about everything and done about everything. And it got to the point where we didn't even have to mention the name. We could run just a picture of the tummy and get 100% recognition of who that ad was for. In its moment, it created a personality that extended across literally every platform we used with our doctors and it came at the audience in a way that they had not experienced before. I think it's always easier to get client approval on campaigns when you have an analog of somebody else who's done it. Uh, but if you're doing things for the first time, you're creating that analog. And yeah, that makes, that makes uh, clients of a heavy regulated industry a little bit nervous. Yeah, it was, it was difficult to get Abbott, a very conservative company, to, um, to let one of their major brands be represented by a dog. And the initial reaction to Bix was terror. But there were enough people on the client side, Jerry Winker in particular, who was the brand manager at the time, that saw the, saw the potential for Bix. For me, I thought it was great. I thought it was um, very campaignable, and uh, that became our campaign. So campaigns like Bix, campaigns like Tummy, were all cute, whimsical, and when you like something, you remember it. Yeah, I think they, they are absolutely similar in that there are these great iconic characters. Jolly Green Giant exists for a reason, guys. So it's like some of these things that uh, consumer agencies wouldn't think twice of doing, it was a, that was a big deal in pharmaceutical advertising at the time. I think all of those campaigns had an influence on the industry. Advertising before that had looked very different and looked different afterwards, too. The other thing is, is other agencies wanted to do work like that. And so they started pushing their clients for it as well. You know, we heard for a number of years um, that, that we had raised the bar. Uh, and I, th I think that's the case. It being inducted into the Hall of Fame just recognizes what we all thought at that time, which is like, we're really producing some groundbreaking work in the pharmaceutical ad industry.